Earlier today, I had a chance to sit down with Sonos CEO Patrick Spence on the back of the company's latest earnings report. Spence tells me sales have stabilized ahead of the holidays. You know, really, uh, we had a reset in June when we saw consumer demand uh, slow down. And the good news is our business has stabilized. So uh, we came in a little better than expected. Uh, and we set out for the year ahead. And, and we're trying to be prudent in terms of the way we look at it. So we're assuming the stability continues. We've seen a good reaction to our new product, Submini. Uh, the Ray uh, product that we, reduce, that we uh, introduced in June has also come along. It's now number one product in the UK Germany and the Nordics in terms of soundbars in the entry level category. So we feel like we're in a pretty stable uh, condition right now. We're just monitoring it very closely. When we were talking about your earnings on Thursday, uh, my co-anchor Brad Smith brought up the point, what is stable? Is stable mean you're growing sales again? So we've said for the year that we'll be in constant currency, we'll be you know, flat to up 7%. So you know, usually we look at success as growing our revenue by about double digits you know, every year. And so it's definitely tempered compared to what you would expect in a more normal economy. Um, and so that, that's what we're seeing right now. We've kind of based our estimates off what we know today, right? Because nobody, nobody really knows what's going to happen next year. So we've assumed it'll stay stable like this, and we're just watching it very closely. I know what happened. I know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, Please um, tell us. No, no. You know what's interesting? We, uh, we've been hearing more lately that higher income households are pulling back in spending. I mean, you're not an economist. I'm not an economist. But no. why do you think this is happening? And what does it mean for your business? You know, I'm not, from what we see right now, we're not seeing that. We're not seeing, you know, trading lower. We're not seeing, we've seen that stabilization. Now, we did see a change in June, as I mentioned, right? So we have seen it adjust. Maybe we were ahead of the curve a little bit on that, right, in terms of audio. Um, so I'm not sure why people would be there. There's been more travel. I think travel's gotten a lot more expensive. And so it'll be interesting to see how does that moderate as we get through the holiday season. A lot of travel's done with. Do people at the beginning of the year, take a moment to pause and look at their finances and say, what am I gonna invest in this year? I suspect there'll be a pause as people look at that, but I feel like our business is in a good position because we have such a strong existing customer base that you know accounts for 40 to 45% of our sales every year. How promotional are you prepared to get this season? Um, we are very controlled in the way we do promotions. It's exciting because for the first time in three holiday seasons, we're actually able to do a promotion. Supply chain challenges we are largely behind us. Two years us. ago there, yeah. Patrick. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. You could have said, hey, you know, maybe two years from now, we're going to do a promotion and save, you know, save your money. Well, and, and it's great to be able to do it. But, you know, our products last for a long time. So we have more inventory right now than we would like. Um, but at the end of the day, we know it will sell out over a period of time. We're very disciplined in terms of what we do on margins. And so we don't need to, we're not like an apparel retailer that needs to, you know, clear out for next season or anything like the, the, that. These, these products will sell over a period of time. And we just ramp down or ramp up production as we need to in order to moderate that over time. Is it across the board promotions or specific product lines? Um, it's across the board, uh, largely. Our newer products typically don't get a promotion. Um, when they're in their first year of life, um, but uh, the others all will. How would you characterize uh, the inventory levels at some of the big box retailers you sell at? Yeah, so I think the big box retailers are being a little more cautious in terms of the inventory that they're taking um, right now, but we feel like we're in a good position. I think they're getting more targeted on those products that are moving more quickly, and they're just, they're, they're being more mindful of that and kind of keeping an eye on it, which makes sense in this environment, right? Have you seen component inflation cool down? I, I can't imagine costs are decreasing, but has the rate of change started to slow a bit? It's definitely started to slow, and you've probably seen some of that shipping and logistics data too. It's really come back. And so um, we're seeing all of the costs of supply chain start to moderate, and we're seeing availability change dramatically as well. And so uh, this this is classic, right? We saw an unprecedented increase in demand across the technology landscape um, over the period of the pandemic, and now it's starting to moderate. Everybody's making adjustments, and so I do think that you'll start to see that over time. It, it's already seen an availability. Now, over time, I think costs will moderate. I don't know if they'll come down, but they'll definitely moderate from where they are. What's your biggest priority for next year? Um, really staying focused on um, these four new categories that we're going into. We're super excited. Um, we've got some great products lined up for the future. Um, Corvette and, speakers, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just for you. I appreciate but it. I, I think the, you know, for us, it's really focusing on using this period of time. You know, there's so many companies that are retrenching right now, and we've been working on profitability for four years. And I like to talk about sustainable, profitable growth. So we put ourselves in a position where we can invest right now, and we believe we'll come out of this period even stronger and with new products, expanding into new categories. 
um, and putting us in even a better position. And so we're watching that very carefully because it is different than the way most companies are approaching this uh, period of time. Uh, so we'll just have to watch our business, make sure we remain profitable and in control of our own destiny, but we're pretty excited about the future. What's your philosophy on subscription? So I buy mm. a Sonos speaker, I am not paying you a monthly recurring fee. Maybe I should, I, I'm, I don't know. I'll probably give you some money to pay for something else, but what are you thinking about for next year? Is that something even on your horizon? Yeah, so we, we've kind of dipped our toe in the water with Sonos Radio. So Sonos Radio is now the number one listen to service on Sonos. Um, that just happened. It's about 30% of the listening hours on Sonos. And, and there's a free version, which is ad supported. So we get a little bit of ad revenue. Um, and then there's also a paid um, to remove the ads and get higher quality um, bit rates as well. So we've, we've dipped our toe in the water. Um, there, it is something that I would like to layer on over time and look for other opportunities to do that. Um, but you know, nothing, um, you know, nothing more than that today. I only know you as the CEO of uh, Sonos, Patrick. You've been the CEO for, for for a while. You've seen a lot of economic cycles during that time. What's your advice to other CEOs managing through these, I don't know, just challenging times? Whether it's component inflation overseas, consumer demand in the U.S. You know, what's the what's the secret here? I, I think the the key is staying nimble and really staying on top of where the business is, getting as many signals as you can. We're on it every day to understand the way things are moving and what's happening in the marketplace. And you're trying to combine that with the long-term outlook you have and make sure that you're not sacrificing what you're trying to do in 2024, 2025, to, but, but you have to put yourself in a position where you can navigate, navigate 2023. So making sure that you can navigate those short terms, but investing for the long term is the thing we're all trying to really get the balance right on and certainly we're not perfect but that's that's what we're dealing with every day